Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> All right, we're, we're continuing now <clears throat> in this mamar, in this Hasidic discourse. It's an essay that's written down from a speech that the first Rebbe of Chabad gave about 250 years ago. And it's in a book which is called the uh, Torah Or. And what it's talking about is <clears throat> what are the Jewish people and why are they hated? So that's especially the holiday of Purim. The holiday of Purim, it celebrates this um, enigmatic fact that people hate the Jews. We hate the Jews, and they just don't hate the Jews just occasionally, you know, casually. They hate the Jews. Ah, the Jews are, you know, they're stupid. The Jews are just, you know, they're, they're tricky. The Jews are just, they hate the Jews. They want to kill the Jews. They want to actually kill, actively kill the Jews. They just want to don't have separate bathrooms for Jews or or keep Jews out of the universities or things. That's also true. But the, it comes, <clears throat> they want actively to kill all the Jews. We see this in the in the streets now. <clears throat> I mean, it's just really quite amazing. You know, from, it, it started off just against the Israeli government, and then it came up against Israel, Israel. And now it's, you know, get all the Jews out of Israel, you know, from, from, from the river to the sea. <clears throat> from the river to the sea, which basically means which river to the sea? It means from, you know, to from the what the river? I don't know. There must be some sort of river, but it means like the sea is talking about all the seas, you know, from from sea to signing sea, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. No matter which way you go, they would not like to have all Jews just not exist. And there's also Jews. There's Jews that agree with them. They would like very much to get rid of the Jews. Which, in a way, I mean, that was sort of the idea of Zionism was to get rid of. Jewish identity, you know, that will just be like everybody else, because they were just totally puzzled by this thing of why the people hate Jews. I mean, I don't know if you ever heard the story about Herzl going to cover the Dreyfus trials in France, and that that was when he saw the anti-Semitism over there, that that's what he made, gave him this idea to make this Jewish state, that we could be rid of anti-Semitism by being rid <coughs> of our, um, a lack of, uh, how do you say, nationality. We have to have a national, we'll have a country, and then we'll be like everybody else. But that, it, we see that it didn't work. Now that everybody has two reasons to hate us, because we're Jews, and because also we have a nationality, we're Israelis. So it didn't, not only did it not, you know, uh, uh, mitigate the situation or obliterate the situation, it just exasperated, <laughs> what's the word? Exacerbated oh, the situation. It made it worse. So now they have to. So what? What really is going on? So it's, the whole thing boils down to Purim. The holiday of Purim explains it best, and the Rebbe is explaining like this: <clears throat> Jewish identity is what drives everybody crazy. The Jews also. What is Jewish identity? What is what is a Jew? What is a Jew? And why? The, just because the Jews have an identity, so why does everybody hate them? You know, people don't hate Indians because they come from India, or Chinese because they come from China, or they hate you know Christians or or Muslims because they happen to be this rich and they're not, just keep away from me. You know, have your own country. The Christians can go to the, the, the Italy or whatever, and then nobody cares. Not the Jews. And the Jewish country, everybody hates them even more. Right now, they're not concentrated hate. They're all concentrated. Why? What's wrong? What's going on? <clears throat> there's a lot of explanations. I've seen a lot of explanations and the YouTube and everybody has it figured out. It's, it's, it's because of money. It's because of, of the jealousy. It's because of this. Okay. But wh what's the reason that the Rebbe gives? The reason for hating Jews is the reason that Haman had. Haman had, he's the ultimate, pure, true blue hatred of the Jewish people. But he hated the Jewish people for the right reason. To hate Jewish people. Why did he hate the Jewish people? Because they're different. Jewish people are different. Oh, how different are the Jewish people? What makes them different? How can you be different? What, the, the Japanese aren't different from, from Mexicans? They're different. They're different. Why don't the Japanese hate the Mexicans? <clears throat> no, but the Jews are different, essentially different. The same thing with the land of Israel. The land of Israel is essentially different from any other place. Why is it different? Because it's permanent. It's eternal. It's connected to the creator of the universe. Just like the creator of the universe is permanent, the Jewish people are permanent. The land of Israel belongs to the Jews permanent. Even if no Jew ever lived here, ever in the whole history of the world, 
from Adam, from the, the what is it, the Cro-Magnon man or whatever it is, no, no Jew ever lived in the land of Israel, ever. The first time any Jew ever set foot in the land of Israel is when Theodore Herzl came here and he put his foot down here, first person, and he didn't believe in God, he didn't believe in Torah and anything. It doesn't make any difference. Even Herzl never did it. Even if the first person to ever set the foot in the land of Israel is me, I'm the first person 20 billion years after the world was created or 5,000 years, it doesn't make any difference. The land of Israel permanently belongs to the Jewish people. Is there such a thing as a Jewish people? Yes, everybody knows there is. That's what Haman hated. Hated him. Here we're not talking about the land of Israel. The Jews didn't have the land of Israel. <clears throat> the, the, the song, the whole story of Haman, the, 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 with the, this is Captain Shushan Abira, the whole in Shu, per, per, Persia, where. So the Jewish people are permanent. They're connected to the creator of the universe. The land of Israel is permanent. The Torah is permanent. The interpretations of the Torah are given by people who connected to this permanentness of the Torah, the eternalness of the Torah. <coughs> permanent. What does it mean permanent? Because the Torah and the Jewish people in the land of Israel all scream out there is good and bad, permanent, absolute, absolute good and bad. You can't, if you want to go against it, you can go, you surely you can go against it, but you're wrong. There's absolute right and wrong, and people don't like that. People don't like the idea that they're being created for a purpose and that their whole purpose is to serve the creator and, and, and the creator decides what to do. And who's the creator's representative? The Jews. So in, in a nutshell, Jews are chosen by God. God is eternal. God is infinite. God is good. God is the creator. And the Jews represent all that. <clears throat> whether they want to or not, whether they know it or not, whether they oppose it or not, that's the fact. And therefore, Haman wanted to kill all the Jews, even the Jews that participated in the meal of Ahasuerus, the Jews that didn't believe in Judaism, they didn't care about you, they wanted to be like everybody else, they just leave me alone. And all of a sudden, Haman hated all of them. And Mordechai aroused all of them to wake up to who they really are. Wake up to your true identity. <clears throat> So Haman and Mordechai, they were catalysts to reveal true Jewish identity. And what is true Jewish identity? <clears throat> to do, to make this world a better place, according to God's standards, the Torah. <clears throat> That's what a Jew is, which, by the way, well, we're already talking about this. So we'll start in one minute. That's one reason why the Israelis, the, it, I mean, if there's never been such a thing like this in the, maybe the history of the world. I, I, I'm sure there wasn't. Because there hasn't been, never, they win all of their wars. They have all these enemies. They win, and then they surrender. They win, and then they capitulate. Huh? They give up. Right? They won the Six Day War, gave everything back. Won the Yom, Yom Kippur War, gave everything back. They're surrendering. Right? <clears throat> they defeated the Antifada. They defeated it. They gave them Gaza. They gave it away. <coughs> Right, Bibi Netanyahu went to America and he said, the land of Israel belongs to us. He went to the United Nations and they stood up and they actually clapped for him and he came back and he gave them half of Hebron. Gave it away. <laughs> he said, it wasn't my fault. Somebody else did. The reason is because they have no identity. That's the problem. There's no identity. And because they've left this big vacuum that there's no one that claims that there's anything true. <clears throat> so if there's nothing true, so anyone can jump in. So all the Christians say, no, we're the chosen people. And the Muslims say, no, we're the chosen people. And <clears throat> the land of Israel belongs to us. It belongs to us. But, because it's empty. The Jews don't want to claim it. They don't want to claim themselves. They don't want to claim God. They don't want to take their own birthright. It's like somebody winning the, 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 the boxing champion of the world. And every boxing match, he gets like $20 billion, $20 million, I'm sorry, $20 million. For it, but they put it in somebody else's account. <clears throat> they put in someone else's account. <clears throat> the same thing. God gives us the land of Israel. And we're putting in someone else's account. <laughs> we're giving it to this. It doesn't belong to me. I have not. I don't know what it is. Come and claim it. All you have to have is just a, the identification papers. I got no identity. I have no identity. I don't know who I am. I don't know who my mother was, my father. I don't know Abraham. I, I heard the name Abraham. I don't know really what it has to do with me. Right? That's the Jewish people. <laughs> 
Jewish people confused. <clears throat> and because they're confused and there's this confusion, so therefore there comes into the world, right? All this other, uh, how do you say, uh, the, the, the usurpers. If there's nobody doing so that and no one wants to be the king, I'll be the king, right? You know what? It's not I want to be the king. I am the king. I always was the king. My father was the king. My mother was the king. Right? <clears throat> Say something, Jews. Maybe the guy's right. Could be he's right. Could be. Let's get along. Okay, so that's the idea of why Haman hates the Jews. He hates the Jews because the Jews are God's people. Okay, what's the solution? The solution is very simple. Act like God's people. The only time that Haman has a chance can get through <clears throat> and damage the Jewish people is when the Jewish people don't do what God wants. The hatred is always going to be there. But as soon as the Jewish people don't do what God wants, then, oh, then he sees it. I got a chance. Now I can, now I can get them. But their guard is down. There was a famous thing that there, there was in Malot, the Arabs, these were the, these were the friendly Arabs. These were the good, the good, the good, good guys, right? This was Arafat that we made big peace agreements with them and everything. And this, of course, is before they made the priest agreements. After they made the priest agreements, they just blew up buses and things like that. <clears throat> but anyway, so the, so his men went in in a, in a school in Malot and they killed 50 kids or something, 50 children. <clears throat> and um, uh, the Rebbe said, you have to check the mezuzahs of the place. They checked and there was exactly the number of mezuzahs that were not kosher <clears throat> uh, as the children that were killed. So the, the people said, what are you saying? That's a punishment? So the Rebbe explained, no, I'm not at all. I never even applied it. It's not an implication that's a punishment. What I'm saying is that there is negative forces in the world. And that if you put mezuzahs on your door, it prevents these negative forces to come in. It's like a soldier going into battle. He puts a helmet on. If he doesn't have a helmet on, so he loses a little bit of his protection. Doesn't mean necessarily something bad is going to happen to him. But it does mean that if something does come his way, he has no protection against it. <clears throat> In other words, there's a solution. We can protect ourselves. The Rebbe is going to say even more. The fact is here, we're talking about we can transform the evil. To a certain degree, we're going to be able to transform Haman. A little bit of this we saw in the Six-Day War. That the whole world all of a sudden was on our side. The whole world had respect for it. The whole world understood that we're God's people and the land of Israel belongs to us. Okay, that was for a while. The Israeli government cooled everybody down, but that, that was okay. Here we go. Okay, look. <clears throat> Says the Rebbe, okay. So, <clears throat> Amalek. Amalek is a nation that hates God. And they take it out on the Jewish people because we're God's people. It would be nice if we could get out of this thing, right? But it's not. Why? Because what is God? God is the creator of the universe. God is infinitely good. God is enlivening us. If you hate God, means that you love death. You're pro-death, pro-suicide. Like all these LGBT guys and all this. Is, that's pro-death, right? All this LGBTQ stuff. It's just the diverting of the power of cro procreation for our own, whatever it is, twisted pleasures or whatever they're called all those things up <clears throat> with 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 the, the, the what's it called the, the abortions and the, and this and it's the same thing with the with the Hamas where these guys think death <clears throat> death is great one of the best thing you can do is to die <clears throat> die and to kill and to kill and to die okay so <clears throat> hating God means basically hating life and that's why people hate the Jews because basically they hate life. They want to be the boss. Okay, so it says, until a mullock is destroyed or transformed, we'll see. It says, God's name is not complete and God's throne is not complete. It says, what does it mean? What is God's name? God's name is Yud and then Hey and then Vav and then Hey. That's what God's name is. What? How did he get a name like that? It says, God's name is the aspects of God, how they relate to the world. Because you don't have to have a name unless you're relating to somebody. Somebody calls a name. You're alone. You don't need a name. 
Let me move this up. So God's names are how God relates to the world. <clears throat> Generally speaking, we're made in God's image. Yud and hey of God's name. That's God's plan of the world. What's called Chachma and Bina. And Vav and hey, that's God's emotions and action in the world. And that corresponds to us. We're made in God's image. What we do with ourselves, God reacts. <clears throat> we'll talk about the solution later. Halman's, Halman's thing and, and Mamalek's thing is to separate. To separate. To separate so there shouldn't be any unity. You want to think about God? Good. Just don't bring it into your emotions. You want to, you want to contemplate God? Contemplate, write books, whatever. Don't bring, don't get excited about it. That's Amalek. To separate. The name of God is not complete. And so it means to take over the emotions of a person that even if he thinks about God, but it doesn't come to the emotions, or it comes to one emotion or two emotions, but basically what it is, is egotism. Egotism. Okay, here, let's go. Let's come on. Let's, uh, what are we going to do? Here we go. Mm -hmm. I think we did this, but I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> These three emotions we said, that's the that's the vav. <clears throat> that's the, the three emotions, love, fear, and, <clears throat> and awe. That corresponds to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That corresponds to the vav of God's name. Two times three. Chesed, Gvur, and Tiferes, love, fear, and balance. Love is Abraham. Fear is Yitzchak. Balance, and that's Yaakov. That's called also called beauty. That corresponds to... Okay, Gamilat Chasadim. This is love of God. Doing kindness. Avoda, serving God from below, that's called Tachat Avarta Basimcha. That's the aspect of Yitzchak, Tzchok, from below to above, like fire, prayer, going up, going up. Torah, <clears throat> that's Devar Alacha, <clears throat> that's Yaakov. The Aim Gimel Kavim, this is the three ways of manifesting our Judaism, our Judaism. The three ways of manifesting our Judaism are Torah, which is Yaakov, Avoda, which is prayer, that's Yitzchak, and Kamilat Chasarim, and acts of kindness, that's, Ye that's Abraham. It says from the right side, this is Kamilat Chasarim, this is kindness and charity, that's the God's right arm. Fire, this is gvura, this is the left arm, that corresponds to the service of to prayer, <clears throat> that's Yitzchak, that the main thing is Kabbalat o Malchut Shaman, accepting on yourself the yoke of heaven, because God is a king, Kamelech o Merelav, that's the idea of prayer, what is the idea of prayer? You're praying to the king, you're praying to God that he's greater than you. You're making God your king. Like we say, Melech Olam. Every time we make a blessing, we say, Blessed are the king of the world, the king of the world. Like it says, Sum to Sim Alecha Melech. You should put on yourself a king. I know you seem believable that you should put into your heart, Ke'ilu Omed, like you're standing in front of a king. <clears throat> God is the king. He's creating everything. He's the boss of everything. <clears throat> that comes by al -Zeb, by means of this, there falls upon you fear. The main thing of fear is because of Kirva Sadover. The thing is so close, what does it mean? The, the, the revelation of a thing which is awesome. Awesome, right? You learn about lions in university. You learn about it. You open up your door and there's a big lion. Oh, this is, uh, right? That's fear. It's just too much. Also, when you put onto your heart the greatness of God, Shehu Ad Ein Kates, that God is unlimited. And God is right here. And nevertheless, Mali Kalorats, and he's right in front of us. Who connect the Azai Tikva Yira, then you have fear in your heart. And this is a healthy, <clears throat> beneficial fear. It's a good fear. You feel how great God is, how infinite God is, and, and God is infinitely close to us. So I, 
You can't do what you want. I'm not, all of a sudden you realize I'm not the king. Even more, my whole being depends on Hashem. That's what's called accepting the yoke of God. Accepting the yoke of God means admitting I'm just a creation. That's the idea of Kabbalah all, accepting the yoke of God of heaven. Hainu am shachat malchuta to draw God's kingship below into the physical world. Hagam, even though shachat kabbalat malchut, even though that after you have finished and said, God, you are my king in Shema Yisrael, it says, love. Let's say we see, we feel how God, great God is and that God is creating us. So that should bring us to love. I mean, God is creating me. So that's really pretty good. <clears throat> it says, yes, that's true. But nevertheless, after that, Nehemiah, it says the second section, the second paragraph of Shema, it says, V'shom Lachem, you better watch out. That's how the Tanya starts off. On one hand, we have to love God because God loves us and God creates us and enlivens us. But on the other hand, don't get too friendly because we're talking about God over here. We're talking about our creator that's creating us. And our whole being is nothing without God. So that's a tremendous fear. And that God is so awesome, so big. God is really creating me. And a person feels that, then he also feels, yes, God is infinitely good. He is creating me. And I love him because of that. And he loves me even more. But on the other hand, he's the king. I'm only here because of, you know, luck. I'm just lucky. God is creating me. Just It's just a gift. And I don't want God to take the, take the gift back. Hey, hey, don't take it back. <clears throat> right? Somebody gives you a million dollars, you know, a million dollars, and he wants to take it back. So you say, hey, please don't take the money back. But let's say a doctor saves your life. He says, okay, now I want to kill you. I'm taking your life back. Hey, hey, that's it. Right? But anytime the doctor wants to listen, all I have to do is push this little button, and that's it. You're dead. Hey, don't push that. Right? That's the same thing with God. Any second he wants to, we're just not here. Okay, God doesn't want that. He wants us to be here. <clears throat> but the fact is, is he has, it's just by his miraculous <clears throat> kindness that he just creates us all the time. So we have to realize that sure, he's acting like a nice friend, but it, it's the king. The king is acting like a friend. The king is... Rakhavish Tehila, in the beginning, first of all, you have to have love and that you can want to cling to him. And afterwards, you want to cling to God. Yosim Libo, you put your mind to think about God, how great he is. Shulamata, Kamulamaila, the God is below, next to me, just like he is above. It says that if a person would see an angel, he would die from fright. And God is creating all the angels. So on one hand, God is creating me. So I think, you know, God's pretty good. You know, he's my buddy. That's true. But on the other hand, you have to understand that God is also creating the angels. And God is infinitely high. And that the fact that God is close to you is just because God loves you. He's, that's why it's not explainable. But you have to have awe. You have to do what God wants. Then, nimshach yira, then you'll have fear. Like it says, Avram, holy Yitzchak. <clears throat> Avram gave birth to Yitzchak. Here, here the Rebbe is talking about what a Jew is. A Jew has to have an intimate relation with God. Just like a normal human being has a positive relationship with his parents. A normal human being. A person that does not have parents, he's missing something. Or a person that had the abusive parents or whatever, you're missing something. A normal human being has a positive, good relation with his parents, with his siblings, with his, his aunts, his uncles, but especially his parents. You have a special, a good relationship. That's a... That's the begin. That's the beginning of everything, every hum of humanity. The beginning of humanity is I'm born. A person is born, and be being born, <clears throat> you have a relationship with your parents. People like Freud and Adler and all these scientists. They looked at the person's soul. The Rebbe said, all these other psychiatrists and everything. They looked at the person's soul. The fact that you're born, and they found just filth, bad things, negative things. That the, the, the Oedipus complex is a, a superiority complex. That's, Wait, which is not the, the, the Rebbe fact, I mean, just throwing this in. Viktor Frankl was the only one they said the Rebbe looked at human person. The, the, he looked at human personality and he found diamonds. <clears throat> to have a positive relationship with, you, with your parents from where you come from is, is the essence of, of society. It gives you a value of life. It gives you a value. Okay, how much more so you should have a positive relationship with God? That's a Jew. A Jew has to have a positive relationship with God. A deep relationship, just like he has with his parents, but even deeper. 
Non-Jews have to have a relationship with God like a next door neighbor, like a friend, like a this. But the Jews, the, the God is our father. We're sons of God. That's every Jew should have that. Every Jew, without exception. Just like every human being should have a normal relationship with the family, right? And the appreciation of family he comes from a family, he wants to make a family. There's the same thing as also. <clears throat> every Jew has to have a positive relationship with God. That positive relationship is not exactly like with your father. Your father is a person just like you. Right? <clears throat> but God is the creator. He's the creator of the whole universe. So on one hand, you, you, you have the, the beginning of it is love. The beginning of it is God is good. That's the beginning of prayer. The first step in prayer, you want to pray, number one step, God is good. Rabbi Mendel Futtafas told me that, but it's also, here you see, God is good. I like God. God likes me. God is creating me. Right? God's my friend. He's infinitely close. Best friend. He's always close to me. That's the beginning of serving God. <clears throat> After you think about that, you think once again, what is God? I mean, God is not, he's, he really is creating the whole universe. That's fear. That's Yitzchak. That's what it comes to tell you. It already says that Yitzchak is the son of Abraham. Oh, I'm sorry, skip the line. It's like it says, Abraham is a sentence that, in Toldot, in, uh, in uh, the book of Genesis. Abraham gave birth to Yitzchak. It says, these are the generations of Yitzchak, the son of Abraham. Abraham gave birth to Yitzchak. It says, what does it mean? What does it come to tell you? It comes to say that Yitzchak, it already said that Yitzchak is the son of Abraham. To teach you, that Yitzchak is given birth to from love. That fear of God is not a thing in itself. And Abraham is not something by himself, but all of the aspects of holiness are one unity. The in Bahim Piru, there's no separation. In other words, just to be afraid of God that he's going to punish you is not healthy. That's what a lot of religions are based on. Right? God is going to punish you. God is really bad. And God is really bad. You, you want to be saved. You want to be helped. You have to have someone in between. Someone who likes you, who's close to you. That's not so. This is a big lie. God is infinitely close to us. <clears throat> infinitely close to us. And step number one is we have to have a love of God. Love of God. Appreciate how good God is, how close God is. After that, there can be a level of fear. <clears throat> Other places it says a little bit differently, but okay. The chain also, the Indian of Korbanos, the sacrifices, it says that there is a lion of fire that came down and devoured the sacrifices. Really, in the first temple, there was a, a lion that hovered over the sacrifices and devoured them. That's the face of the lion, which is on the right. That's the fire, and fire came from the lion. Fire is Gavura. So we see is, is, is uh, fear, awe. So we see, first of all, there was the lion, and from the lion there came fire. Just like that, from love comes fear. And also the same thing as the service of the <clears throat> Levites. <clears throat> so one of this, first of all, you have to have a, a, how realize how good God is. And then afterwards, you can come to appreciate how awesome God is, how far God is coming down in order to enliven you. This is beginning to stop because this goes away. All this is... The, uh, I'm sorry, Gavuras, from below to above, that's what's called Chayas Ratz of Ashov. It says that the life force goes up and comes back down. And that's also Mati Velo Mati. It comes down, it touches, but doesn't touch. That's it says that God is like a pulse, like a pulse of life, that God enlivens the world and then it goes back up. Enlivens the world, it goes back up. In other words, the, the, the life force that God enlivens the world is very small. But if it stays here too much, <clears throat> it stays there too much, then the world will evaporate. Too much light, so it has to go back to its source again. And come back. That's the pulse of life. That's called mati velo mati. It touches and doesn't touch. <clears throat> All this is, that's fire. Just like fire. It, it's connected, connected to the wick, but it's going up, so it flickers back and up. That's what it says, that the Torah is ish dat. The Torah is a fiery... <clears throat> Law, that, that's the middle pillar. This is the level of Torah, which the Torah, that's the true Torah. That's the, the emet, Aleph Mem Tov. That's the aspect of Yaakov. 
And so we see that lo loving God, that's the beginning. Appreciating God, that's Abraham. Fearing God, that's step number two, when you realize how awesome God is. That's Yitzchak. And Yaakov, that's the Torah. And the Torah takes from the essence of God, the awesomeness of God, <clears throat> and brings it down into the world. It comes from one end to the other. Bezel Bechinus Yaakov, that's Yaakov. That's Titan Amos Yaakov. Now, a person that appreciates God, a healthy Jew that appreciates God, and eventually the whole world, it's necessary to have all these, all three. Because all three are just realizing different aspects of God himself. That's the whole picture of what God is. It's like a parent that only loves his children, so only gives to them. Only gives to them all the time. Or children that only love their parents, but they don't give them any respect. <clears throat> parents that love their children, but they don't give them any, any sort of, uh, I say, order in the world. They never tell them no. It's not good. The same thing, parents, children, they love their parents, but they don't give them any respect. My dad's my best friend, right? No respect. That's not good. The same thing with God. God is infinitely good, infinitely close to us. But don't, get, don't think only good. God is not only our friend. You have to have the second aspect. You have to realize it's God, right? That he's infinitely great. You have to have awe. That's really where the positive commandments and the negative commandments come from. And, the, and we'll learn that later. And then the third aspect is that God wants to be revealed in the world. He wants us to bring all these aspects in the world. That's the Torah. All these three aspects are necessary. That is drawn down from God's right arm, ish, fire. So right, that's the right side. That's love. Ish is, um, uh, is gvura. And that, that's the Torah. This comes from the, the, the last chapter of the Torah, Tzota Bracha, Eish Dat Lamo. It says the Torah is a fiery law from God's right hand. He gave a fiery law, Lamo, to them, to the Jews. Kadei Lachzor, in order to be attached to God again, by means of Yaakov, that goes from one end to the other. This oh. <coughs> is these six emotions, they come from the Vav, of God's name. That's what we learn for love, fear, and balance. <clears throat> that there's two aspects of that. That's the letter Vav. That's the six emotions of God. That's the letter Vav. The hint is the hey, the last hey of God's name. That's three things of thought, speech, and action. That's actually doing the Torah, saying the words of Torah, thinking the words of Torah. That's the last step. Okay, so here we have, I want to skip a little bit. So, so what do we have? What is God's name? It says that when Amalek is there, God's name is not complete. What do you mean God's name is not complete? The first two letters of God's name are Yud, Hey. That is the revelation of God above the worlds. Vav Hey is how God becomes revealed in the world. Fear, love, Torah. Thought, speech, action. That's vav hey. Vav hey, vav is the emotions. Love, fear, and balance. <clears throat> that's the hey, the last hey. That's action, speech, and thought. How it comes into the world. A Amalek wants to separate between those. <clears throat> what does a Amalek want to do? That you have either no comprehension of what God is, or it doesn't come into your emotions, or it comes only partially into your emotions. <clears throat> In other words, somehow or other to cover over God's true identity and God's true connection to the Jewish people and to the world. That's Amalek's thing. To cool people down. Cool people down. What is this Amalek inside of us? What is this Amalek inside of us? We talked about this before. What is this Amalek? We have to fight against the Amalek inside of us. What is Amalek? <clears throat> False egotism. False egotism. If a person doesn't know what true egotism is, then he doesn't think that there's such a thing as false egotism. False egotism is <clears throat> that you don't feel God. What do you feel? You feel yourself. Right? Most healthy thing in the world, a person feels himself. Kagato ergo sum. What does Descartes say? I am aware, therefore I exist. That's the basis of all reality. That's what this philosopher said. That's the basis of all the reality that I am. I'm here. I exist. 
says the Rebbe, that's a Amalek. That's a Amalek. Amalek is the only thing I can really be sure of and the basis of all <clears throat> knowledge and awareness and truth is me. What does that come out to as far as morals go, as far as this? You decide. Everyone decides. That's Amalek. Amalek is there to say God does not exist or exists maybe a little bit or maybe even a lot, but you are the center. You're the main thing. Now, this doesn't always have to come out that he hates the Jews. It doesn't always have to come out in this terribly destructive and negative way. It doesn't have to come out that way. And because the fact is, is there is, <clears throat> when God created the world, and again, when he gave the Torah, he gave this thing called conscience to the world so that people can connect to God. They can connect to true right and wrong. So people feel deep down, it's wrong to kill, it's wrong to steal, it's wrong to be licentious, right? This LGBTQ stuff, it's wrong. People know it in their souls. They know it. They can ignore it, they can defy it, they can, whatever it is, but still people know it. <clears throat> but nevertheless, the egotism that people have that def that covers the, the a conscience up and makes a person selfish, that's a like a pure egotism. Oh, so that's, here we go. Okay, so that divides between the yud hey and the vav hey. In other words, <clears throat> the, the awareness of God doesn't come into your emotions, or you're not aware at all, but there's a separation. It divides between the God's name is not complete. Oh, so it also says, and also God's throne is not complete. What's the throne? The throne is the Torah. One second. <clears throat> oh, here it is. The Indian Sha'omu, that what it says that the throne is not complete. That's the key say, that's case, the covering of Aleph. We'll see, that's the Torah. What is the Aleph? Aleph, that's Aleph Chachma, Aleph Chabina. <clears throat> it's a sentence in what is it in, in Proverbs? I will teach you wisdom, I will teach you understanding. Aleph means to teach. Aleph is also. Uh, hinting at God. God is number one. I will teach you wisdom. I will teach you. It's the Torah. <clears throat> you that that it says that while all the until a mullah is wiped out, that God's name is not complete means what that we can't get excited about God. We're excited only about ourselves. We can't come to love God. We can't come to fear God. We can't come to <clears throat> appreciate God. That's God's name. What about God's throne? God's throne, that's learning the Torah. <clears throat> learning the Torah. The Torah came down into the world, and it's covered in physical things, called, like everything in the world, right? The laws of the Torah are laws of agriculture, all the holidays, <clears throat> damages, marriage. This is called kise. Why is, it, why is it called a throne, God's throne? Like, for instance, a when a king wants to sit down, so he brings himself down into the throne. Mashpil Acharav, he brings his, <coughs> his body down into the throne so he can sit. Also is the Torah. The Torah is how God is coming down into the world, so to speak, the backside of God, dealing with all these mundane things. It came down and is enclosed in this physical world. In, in, in the, how do you how do you do, take tithes from your crops? And what happens if somebody damages your ox? I think that's what God deals with. Yes, that's what the Torah is. And that's what's called God's throne. On one hand, God is coming down. The word kise also means that it's covered. Kise means to cover. But also it's a vehicle. It's, an, a, 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 it's a, a furniture for God. Shiyordu v'nishpal, the God came down into the world. That's the Torah. And when a person learns the Torah, so learning the Torah <clears throat> can be in one of two ways. Either it can be because it's a really interesting book, <clears throat> <clears throat> or it can be because God gave it. It's God's wisdom and God's will. That's what it means. When a malik is here, it means that you learn the Torah only for egotistical reasons. That's the world is bishfila Torah. For the, you have to learn Torah. It has to be for the sake of the Torah itself to draw down into the Torah this level of Aleph and the, the oneness of God. 
that God, God is teaching me. The Torah is God speaking to me. Like it says, the Jewish people draw down the oneness of God in the world. That's to what the Torah should be. Which is not the case of a person that says, all I have is the Torah. That's the level of a Amalek. He separates the Aleph, the godliness, from the case, from the covering, from the words of the Torah. And the Torah becomes like a book, like any other book in the library. <clears throat> Okay, so that's what Amalek does. Like we said before, another word for Amalek is I. I want, I think. So how are you going to get rid of Amalek? What are you supposed to do? You can't get rid of your yourself. You're going to get rid of yourself or you're going to have, be lobotomized or something. You're not going to have anyone who says, no, 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 no. That's not the way it works. <coughs> <coughs> If everybody, if let's say everyone in the world is devoted totally to God, only to God, what's it going to be? Well, the world will be missing a lot of things. The world will be missing a lot. Of, it'll be missing war. It, it'll be missing murder, uh, addictions. The world will be missing depression, sadness. Can the world get along without these things? Without lust? <clears throat> without... <clears throat> Cheating, lying, teaching, right? What type of a world is that? Without loss, without murder, without without addictions. What are the the the, the, the narcotics dealers? What are they going to do? Right? They'll be out of business. <clears throat> Eventually, it says there'll be a world without disease. There won't be disease. Not just invented disease like the the corona and this World Health Organization and this stuff. The World Health Homicide Organization. Be, there won't really be real diseases. There won't be disease anymore. What are the doctors going to do? Lubavitcher Rebbe said the doctors will be there to tell people that they're not sick. <clears throat> if God rules the world, then the world will be without any negative things. <clears throat> Only positive things. In other words, God's name will be complete. The creator will be revealed in the creation. God does a pretty good job creating, right? Keeps all these bugs and things that going, all the, the respiratory systems of all the frogs and the Amazon, what is it, jungle. It keeps them all going. All the snakes and all the weird fish that are down, what are 20,000 leagues under the sea? God has, all the, he, keep, he creates them all and he keeps them going. God knows what he's doing. The same thing with us. If the world is really filled with God, then people will be positive. They'll be able to fill their true nature. People will be happy to see other people. People will help other people. People won't suspect other people. People won't lie and cheat and kill. <clears throat> but it all depends on the Jewish people. So we have to get rid of this amalek. We have to get rid of this false egotism. Now, again, this false egotism is something that God created. He created the potential for false egotism. And when you get into it, so it's an unending world. There's all sorts of details, <clears throat> right? in how to take the drugs and what the, all these different types of, you know, the, the levels and what is it, the, the, of depression and aggression and, right, all these diseases, there's these big books of all the diseases that there are in the world, psychological diseases. That, there won't be any of these things, but it all depends <clears throat> because we misuse our ego. And that's a Amalek. Amalek is the ability to misuse your ego to think that you're God. It says, what's the way? How are you going to get rid of all? It? it says, Yad al case Yudke. <clears throat> we have to do, we have to use our hand. What's the hand? There's <clears throat> it's the the yad, there's a level of a hand which is higher than all this level of the Torah, and it's higher even than the level of Yudke of the of God's the beginning of God's name. It's the cure for all problems. What is this yad we're supposed to use? There's three hands. Yad Gadola, Yad Chazaka, and Yad Harama. It says Yad Rama. It doesn't say Yad Harama. The Yad Harama. Though I don't know why he put. Maybe that's a mistake in printing. Okay, it should say Yad Hagadola, Yad Chazaka, and Yad Rama. Yad Rama. Three times in the Torah, it says that the Jewish people saw the the, the Yad Gadola, this powerful hand of God. And it says the Jewish people went out with Yad Rama, without the hey, Yad Rama. And also the Yad HaChazaka, 
which was in uh, in Egypt, the Yer Chazaka, the people saw. <clears throat> we have to make use of these three hands. It says, the Yerai, the Jewish people saw <clears throat> Yara Gadola, they saw the, the great hand of God. That's the Ha, great, the, the great hand. <clears throat> this is known, and this is what's called love. This is what we talked about before. How are we going to fix up <clears throat> this plague of Amalek in the world? Well, it depends on us doing it. It's like now it's the same thing we talked about in the beginning of, the, of this class, right? Now we're fighting against the Hamas. So the Hamas, they're evil, and they're, they're, they're <clears throat> murderers and rapists and destructive people, and they burn people. They're, they're terrible people. Okay, so we win. Right? We kill them all. We kill all the Amalek. We kill them all, right? Okay, first of all, you have all these children that they we allowed them to teach their children to hate us for, year, for years. So you got all these people. Okay, so how are we going to fix this up? You have to teach them the truth. What is the truth? We don't know. The Jews don't know. The Israelis don't know. What are we supposed to teach them? What are we supposed to do? <clears throat> what is the cure for Amalek? Amalek is egotism. What are we supposed to tell these people? Don't be yourself. right? You're taught to kill us. Don't kill us. That's not right. What, what is right? Why not? <clears throat> so here's the, what the real true identity of the Jewish people and of every human being is. Number one, love. Your true identity is to love God. A person has to arouse himself a love of God. This we can be understand. You can understand. This is ha. It's known. Also, yada chazaka. That's the yad hagadola. Gadola means bigness. How good God is. Number two, we have to teach the world about the yada chazaka. It says they saw the yad, the powerful hand. This is called a yada chazaka. <clears throat> the, all the powerful things that I get in the end of, of the, the Torah. God's powerful hand. This is the hey, this is the, it's known. This is fear. Fear of how great God is. Especially, therefore, we see in Shimon Esrei, what, what do we mean? We did sins. We means we didn't know who you were. We're singing against God. We did we were singing against God. We removed the yoke of God from our shoulders. This is considered to be like a sin. Therefore, before Shimon Esrei, we don't feel that we did anything bad. After Shimon Esrei, then we say, the confession prayer, because after Shimon Esrei, suddenly we realize, wow, you know, just the, my attitude that I had, that I didn't care about God, <clears throat> was wrong. After Shimon Esrei, we realize how great, how infinitely powerful God is. Then we say, hey, maybe I'm not the boss. Maybe I can't do That's called fear. As I then, Nidma Bain of Machshavad Libo Kalayom, Shalom Sheikh Alavir, if a person before he prays the Shmon Esrei, so he doesn't have any fear, so he removes his mind from it, this is considered to be like a sin. He took off from himself the yoke of heaven. It's like standing in front of the king and saying, Oh, one second, uh, Your Majesty, I got a phone call over here. I guess, Oh, look at the, 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 the Dodgers won. Well, this is really great. Excuse me, Your Honor. This is. You, know, he thought, you don't do that in front of a king. Come on. <clears throat> God is a king. No, no, God's my friend. He creates me. He loves me. <clears throat> it says, no. Yeah, love is the first step. Second step is awe. Awe means, okay, I'm, you're the boss, God. Whatever you say, I'll do. Okay, don't look at your cellular phone. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Throw the cellular, put it on the ground, smash it. Okay, okay, I'll smash it. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. I'm, I'm not, that's called fear. This is machalon, that's what it means. Forgive us, God, because we have sinned. What does it mean? Because we have sinned, it means keep peshanu. As we've done pesha, what does it mean, pesha? That we've removed your kingship from us. The only reason we did sins is because we forgot that you're a king. Now, because you are a king, and we've accepted the yoke of heaven, so therefore we say, Oh, yeah, I realized I did bad things. I didn't think I was going against anybody. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's the left arm. Okay, so two ways to get rid of egotism. 
Number one, to realize how good God is and how close God is, loving God. That's called the Yad, uh, Yad Achazaka. <clears throat> no, no, that's called the, the, the Yad Gadola. I'm sorry, that's called the Yad Gadola. Then, number two, to realize how awesome God is and that we should accept the yoke and that God is the king. That's called the Yad Hachazaka, that God is awesome and we fear God. <clears throat> that doesn't take away our love. But the, the but then there's also the third thing is Yad Rama. <clears throat> it says the high hand. The Jewish people went out of Egypt with a high hand. It says without the hate, not the high hand. This comes from, this is the source of the Jews. A Jew has to think, where is my source? What are the Jewish, the Jewish people are higher than the Torah. <clears throat> They're higher than the sins. They're connected. This is tshuva. That's what's called tshuva ilah, the upper tshuva. Like it says, tshuva is before to return. By means of returning to who you are from the essence of your soul, then the spirit returns to God. It says, your turn. Then this is, you go back to the source. That's what it means. The Jewish people rose in God's thought. <clears throat> <clears throat> so the first two is thinking about God. And the third one is thinking about me. Where am I coming from? Who am I? Perish ki machshava achad. With one thought, God creates the world. And the Jewish people are before that. The Jewish people are before the first thought to create the world. So when a person thinks that, he thinks, what am I doing these sins for? What am I running after these foolish pleasures for? What am I getting depressed about? What am I angry about? What am I... <clears throat> it's totally not befitting who I am. If this is as God, when he created the world, he consulted with the souls of the Jews. So the Jews are higher than all the thought of the world. That's what's called tshuva, return. <clears throat> the Jewish to the source of them, their souls. That's what's called Yad Rama. It's elevated above all, <clears throat> all difficulties, all past, present, and future. And therefore, Yishma Maile Yatira, therefore, the Jewish people, that from them they can make a war for God, against Amalek. Amalek cannot stand against this level to be covering and hiding. <coughs> A simple example, like I said before, the, it was Bibi Netanyahu. He went to the, to the, 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 I don't know when this was, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. He went to the United Nations. When was he? It seems he's been for forever. Anyway, he went to the United Nations and he said, and the Rebbe told him that the United Nations is 70 wolves against one sheep, that it's a place of evil, that they all hate Israel. And what you have to do is don't pay any attention to them. You have to just say the word God's chosen people. And he went there and he said it. He said, well, God gave us the land. The land of Israel belongs to us. And all of the people, even the biggest enemies, they stood up and they clapped. They clapped. In other words, as soon as you go back to your source, I am a Jew. I am only here to benefit the world. I'm only here in order that the whole world should realize how much God loves them. <clears throat> to go back to your source, that's called Yad Arama, that's higher above everything, <clears throat> then that negates all the egotism. Egotism can't stand against that. A Moloch's big trick is, I'm here to benefit you, huh? like the guy standing in the shadows, Want to buy a picture, kid? Want to, want to buy some drugs? Right? Standing in the shadows. As, as soon as the lights go on, then the Amalek hasn't got a chance. The same thing, our false ego that draws us into doing all sorts of destructive, negative things, it's only there because we don't know what God is. We don't know what the Jews are. As soon as we would know what the Jews are, then that would take care of the problem. And that's really <coughs> the, hot, the miracle of Purim. It's a happy holiday. And it's also the, the solution for all the world's problems today. As soon as the Jews, we'll get to that tomorrow. As soon as the Jews say, hey, we're God's people. God is creating everything. God loves everyone. God is good. We've got the Torah. The Torah is the blueprint for creation. It's telling about the seven white commandments. As soon as the Jewish people stand proudly and do this, then Amalek hasn't got a chance. 
He hasn't got a chance. <clears throat> Hitler will be speaking to empty crowds. <clears throat> just be a couple janitors over there cleaning up the the, the, the Nuremberg, uh, whatever it is, the, <clears throat> the field. Nobody's going to listen. <clears throat> <clears throat> so that's the solution. That's the solution to the problem. That's the solution to the problem of Hamas and the solution to the problem of the world and the United Nations and all the enemies to be who we really are. In order to do that, we have to have love of God. We have to have fear and awe of God, how great God is. And we have to realize the essence of who we are. We're the source. We're connected to the essence of God before the creation in order to improve the creation, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. <clears throat> A little bit long, I think. Class, what are we gonna do? Okay. <clears throat> now we'll do the young. Uh... Eh, what happened? One minute. 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 Somehow or other, I erased all the work I did. Okay. No problem. I'll do it. One second. Stop share.